Uh, tell you what's been going on in my life, guys. I've uh, recently been eating more vegetarian meals, which is nice. Like, I'm not a vegetarian, just eating vegetarian meals. And I actually think uh, people's tolerance for vegetarians is the best example of how we've progressed as a society. Because I grew up in the 80s and 90s, and I can let you know during that period, the sole purpose of a vegetarian was to be ridiculed. <laughs> that was it. They'd be at a barbecue, someone would be like, hey, would you like a sausage? They're like, oh, actually, I don't eat meat. And I goes, oh, here we go. And <laughs> you'd give them shit until they cried, and then someone would say, well, you wouldn't cry if you had iron in your diet. And then... <laughs> That's how you would shame them into the status quo. <laughs> but now I've got plenty of friends in my life who are vegetarians. You know, there's documentaries out, there's literature about vegetarianism. But of course, now that we're all getting along, of course, something had to change. In a very 21st century way, it's now all remarketed, isn't it? No, you don't say you're a vegetarian, you say, I'm on a plant-based diet. <laughs> I'm on a plant-based diet. Thanks for describing vegetarianism to me in three words. That's. <laughs> That's great. Like, are we doing this? Are we doing this? Are we plant-based diet? Okay, okay. Well, then after this, I guess I'll go get a scissor-based haircut, I guess. Uh, <laughs> go have a water-based shower, which would be fun. <laughs> have a shame-based wank, which would be nice. <laughs> I mean, it's a very high and mighty thing, isn't it? Oh, I'm on a plant-based diet. It's like, yeah, we've all been on plant-based diets, guys, okay? Because plants are very good. They give us food. They're great like that. The plants also give us alcohol and most of the drugs. <laughs> I'm just saying on any given Saturday night, you can head out and find thousands of people just plant-basing the fuck out of their diet. <laughs> oh, I don't eat meat because I don't want to be harmful to animals. Yeah, that's why we take drugs so we can talk to them. Like, it's a, <laughs> a nice thing to do, guys. Now, I know I can be a bit crass up here on stage. Stand-up comedy can be crass at times. And I've, I found out it's a very generational thing. Older people don't like it, but don't like the swearsies, you know. And fair enough, we should be better, we should. But let's all be honest, we've all heard swear words before. We've just went through two years of a pandemic. I don't think every time a lockdown was called, anyone went, well, oh, fiddlesticks, that is. <laughs> Golly gosh, that's a lot. Oh, because I was leaving a gig, I remember I just performed at, and this woman came up to me, she's a little older, and she said to me, uh, I enjoyed it, but you did swear a lot. And I was like, yeah, so I was, so I was about that, you know, it should be better. And she said something I haven't heard in years, she said, you should use the Queen's English. It's an old-fashioned turn of phrase, isn't it? Alluding that the Queen never swears. Now, if you break it down, Queen Elizabeth was one of the youngest monarchs in British history simply because her father died of the stress of being the head of the entire British Empire. When he didn't want to be king in the first place, his brother abdicated because he wanted to marry a divorcee. She then married a man. He seemed quite charming, but unfortunately he had some off-colour jokes that were slightly racist and bigoted and continued to do those in front of cameras and behind the microphones for the whole 99 years of his existence. She then had four children, her eldest, the heir to the throne. He married a very lovely lady and they had two great children, but unfortunately he was having an affair and that led to their divorce. He's now married to the woman that he was having the affair with and unfortunately the mother of his children died in a horrific car accident. One of her other son's being photographed with a man who ran a notorious pedophile ring but refused to go across the Atlantic and actually talk to the FBI about his relationship. One of her grandsons has decided to leave the family business of doing stuff all. <laughs> because he doesn't like the stress. So I'm just saying odds are there wasn't at least one afternoon <laughs> where Lizzie was at the back of Windsor Castle, just a G and T in hand. Staring at the corgis, going, <laughs> I've had a cunt of a day. <laughs> Have a great night, guys. <laughs>